Hello there. Hello, Yo. hello. Alrighty, by the looks of like things, it. we should be live uh, offer, on Twitch. Offer, before you yes. Offer, before What's you up? start. Um, I don't know if you did, if you saw the message I sent you a little bit. Uh, let's see. Gotcha. And I'll be showing that uh, live if that's okay with you. Your message there. Um, just another question, um, can I record? I, I want to test out the OBS. Uh, yeah, do whatever you want, uh, as long as, uh, it doesn't mess up your connection, but, uh, yeah, that's not gonna affect us here. see we should be live now I'll put the link here uh, too you can check us on uh, on twitch Doing all right there? Are you about ready, Doc Donzo? All right. You doing all right there? Are you about ready, Doc Donzo? Uh, my computer just restarted, so I'm back in the game, but not not 100 percent sure yet. But yeah, okay. just start. I'll catch up. I'll catch up at some point. Okay, no worries. Uh, this live thing you sent me. What's this? Uh, that's the link where you can see us live right now, um, but yeah, oh. it's gonna affect your internet. But yeah, just so you know, that's where we're yeah I'm... broadcasted. All right, all right, thanks. Yep. Check it out maybe later, but I can't play it right now. Oh yeah, just a heads up. I'm starting that YouTuber hero thing again, and. I'm trying to draw characters, and I've already drawn yours. You look super edgy, just so you know. <laughs> uh, cool. You can always like combine. What I would do in your case, if you don't feel comfortable with your drawings, um, I would do a. I would find a fan art that's the closest thing possible, and then I would also put in your drawing, so you have a combination of both of them. So you kind of have your but take. I'm and then you have something related. Edgelord. Okay, yeah, that's a good idea. So far, I've been taking, like, let's say, say Jacksepticeye now. Mm -hmm. I'm taking um, X-Men from... Ugh, not X-Men. Uh, Cyclops from X-Men. And basically just took his suit and remodeled it. And okay, you, gotcha. I took Overlord's character and I just gave you a different suit, basically. Different color stuff. Okay. Alrighty, I guess I'm gonna shoot this off then. Uh, Where's everybody else? They're online, they're just not here. Let me change this. Yeah, and let's yes. get this um, on here. Alright, here we go. Welcome everybody to the number... To the ninth monster cast. That's right, the ninth. Let me take down my mic a little. Today's monster cast... Uh, is going to be about factors that could create zombies. So um, we were hinting that we're going to do maybe like uh, just uh, pair um, infections or something or viruses. But we're going to cover different factors and we'll see where we get to with this. So 
things that can create zombies. And we got a couple lists up already. Doug Dons is here to join us in the main voice chat. Uh, the others haven't joined us yet, so say hello, Doug Donza. Hello. We got Phobos, or previously known as Creative Equinox, I think still on YouTube. So Phobos is here in the chat, back as usual. I think uh, every time since we've started this uh, ninth one together. So thanks for joining us. Um, still forever trapped. And then we had a post from Victor Markov. Maybe I'll look at that first. That's also talking about things that uh, can infect or create zombies. So when I say zombies here, to make it clear, um, right off the bat, we're going to be talking about zombies or infected. Because they're they're kind of in the same league as far as movies and games go. Um, but there is a different uh, background to them, of course. And that's what we'll be exploring here a little bit. So... Yeah, zombies and infected. Um, can I suggest we just do zombies? Because if you say infected, it's a very short amount of those ones I gave you. But if you go with um, zombies in general, you get much more variety. That's true. Um, let me see here. We can take off infected, actually, and, and make it completely undead zombies. Make that clear. Um, yeah. Yeah, because viruses can do can affect that, too. Okay, that's fine. Um, so let's leave off infected. And since I didn't even use that word in the title, that's cool. So thanks for that. We'll go with the full-out undead zombies. So basically, you cut off their arm. They're still going. Um, there's no beating heart. There's no... Uh, uh, measurable life as far as science knows it in our day and age. Uh, so that kind of zombie. Um, so undead. Uh, let's see, I have uh, a couple things I wanted to mention before we start. Hopefully people start showing up. Um, first thing I wanted to say is our art contest results are in. Um, it's going to be two judges total. It's I and another uh, YouTuber out there. So that'll be announced in the video coming up. Uh, hopefully, not sure if I can get it out by tomorrow, but maybe by Monday. Uh, so, and there is a hundred dollar total prize, um, sixty dollars to the first place, and then down. So, yeah, we got the results. I still have to match them up. Um, so it's fun because it's the first time I actually have somebody join me in the judgment. So, so yeah, thanks to everybody that participated. We had fifteen total submissions. So right at the edge to to hit. Oh, nice. The, higher yeah prize level so yeah congratulations out there to everybody hope you had a good halloween how was your halloween dog donzo uh it wasn't really halloween i don't even know it was halloween till um i can't really remember who said it was halloween but it was in like the chat and by coincidence i saw it and then i was like is it really halloween we don't really celebrate here right i mean you see it in the malls but you don't see it yeah. No one dresses up because it's too unsafe to leave your house after 5 o'clock. <laughs> Jeez, after 5, that's it? Damn. Um, that's how yeah, I feel. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but... Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Oh, Zeke is here. Right on. Is he here? Oh, he is. Cool. Welcome, Z. Join us in the join us in the voice if you can. Um, that's how I feel, Dog Danzo, about most uh, holidays, but once it gets to Halloween, I'm pretty aware of the timing. Um... Luckily, this year I was kind of free, so we got to go out a little and and do stuff, but uh, not as much as I want to, and and with this channel and all, but that's, again, an, another day. But, um, yeah, being a monster... Did you guys actually dress up? Such, I enjoy it. Um, Did you guys dress up? We... I don't want to say this on this channel, <laughs> but no, no <laughs> didn't this year. All right, all right, all um, right We didn't do right. too much. I'll... <laughs> okay. I mean, I feel obligated like I have to, and I should. It's, nah, it's not a problem. <laughs> it's, it's, I'll make up for it. I'll make up for it. So it's just the state of the channel and everything and what's been going on around it. But being a monster lover and master and all that, Halloween is definitely my, my top human celebrated holiday on this earth. So 
I wish um, it was a little bit more popular here. I would, I will admit, but yeah, the businesses insane. you'll notice businesses will push it. If you ever go to nightclubs there, I'm sure they do it because it's a great business. I mean, that's what holidays are. Uh, mainly where yeah, they yeah, celebrate is by business. Yeah. So. Are we uh, going on to the podcast? I really just, I don't feel like going on a podcast today. No worries. Well, honestly, I, I'm just tired. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. A little. I just need to relax. No worries, man. Um, I'm going to keep it pretty short, I think, this time. So, yeah, wherever you are, that's cool. Just glad to see you. Thank you. Glad to see your icon in the... I'm just not feeling so... What's it called? Lively. I'm actively active today. I got you. You sound exhausted. I am. I don't know why. I've been doing nothing all day, but I'm still just powering down. That's, Maybe yeah, that's your problem. Usually you're you're pretty upbeat, actually. So that's kind of the first time. It must be our topic today. It must be the whole zombie thing. You got infected, <laughs> didn't you? Uh, zombie. He's turning into real undead. <laughs> Sorry, He's guys. finally into the transition. I'm that's just going to put this is. Alrighty. Um, another thing but I want again, to... again, I don't have any good experience. I, I, it's been a long time since the last in something good with zombies, in all honesty. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, let's I see. mean, the original movies are really just not the best ideas, and the uh, good movies are just flushed out to the point where you know what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen. It's nothing new. Yeah. Um, so one thing, one more thing I want to shout out, and then we'll get to our topic, whoever's going to be watching this, if anybody at all anymore, but uh, whatever. It's still all passion here. Uh, I wanted to shout this out. I just got this Kickstarter um, in the mail a couple days ago. And it's a uh, comic book by a an artist that uh, is also a YouTuber friend of ours. Um, he, he does YouTube videos. He's been doing them for a long time. And he actually lives in the same state that I do. Um, his oh, name is Jeff Lafferty. Nice. I've mentioned him a couple times. And he just released his first comic. And it's really nice. Nice matte paper. What's it about? Um, it's his character that he created. It's called Berserker Knot. So the Berserker Knot. It's got his name on the top here, and then the name of the character in comics. So uh, yeah, it's really nice. He chose a nice paper for it. It's all matte, and it's got his artwork in it. It's all like uh, like acrylic art that he does. Wait, not what? Like... Phobos, what did you just write? <laughs> Video review. Two minutes ago. So it's Christmas is my favorite hobby, but Halloween is a dear in the favorite. So he broke up with his big titty neck friend girl. Gotta love I that. never had a girlfriend. <laughs> so yeah, all Why the artwork never is had a girlfriend. Based. It's not uh, digital art. So he put a lot of No wonder you into Necrons. Yeah. And yeah, the artwork he actually sold on the Kickstarter and he every art piece that's in the comic is also sold. You can buy the original too, so yeah, shout out to him. Pretty awesome little... Sorry, Arthur, you keep cutting out. Um, what's this comic about? So it's called the Berserker Knot. That's his character that's he, that he created. Uh, well, I gotta go. You have a good time. All right, see. All right, bye-bye. We'll see you. Be safe. And uh, yeah, all the artwork in it was uh, acrylic art painted up, so it's not digital art. You can actually purchase all the art if it's available. That's in the comics, so... Congratulations oh, to him. Okay. Nice. All right, so let's see. Phobos is talking, kind of feeling inclined to jump in. You can jump in, Phobos. All right, let's see. Victor Markov. Okay, so what he talked about is several hours early to the monster cast from my hat. Things that can create a zombies from plague to magic. And that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, to human creations, to technology. Um, so let's see. It all depends on the setting of the zombies it's in. It could also be technological example. The story. Yeah. Uh, Plague-based virus, uh, magic necromancer, voodoo priest. Uh, Dog Downs have just added that. Uh, technology, look at Fallout, New Vegas, big empty DLC soon. Uh, so that is enemy. Let's see. Pathogens. 
Uh, my dog's making funny noises again, so if I run off, um, it's probably because he vomited again. But chances <laughs> are low. That'll be the second part. Cross fingers. Monster Cassie vomits on. Yeah. All right, so let's see. He wants a shout out. All right, just gotten around to watching them yet. A list of videos I want to watch. Okay. Lazarus Effect. Mm, coming back to life. So where are we starting? Too. Well, you know what? I just want to make sure I give him my uh, because full you can't really wait. Read here. So let's take a look at your post, and we'll go down from there. Um, let's see. Let me find your you. Let me find your you. Okay, there you are. So let's let's go off the numbers that you numbered, <laughs> the the terms that you numbered, which is number one, and that's virus. All right. So virus to create. Not an infected, but an undead type of zombie. Fully undead. A full zombie zombie. All right. So, how would that work? Did you have any thoughts around that? Well, to be honest, there are two different types. And one is the one you just mentioned, the true undead. But sometimes you do get where zombies, they they like um, get infected. But they're not really dead. They don't die that right. easily, but they are not dead. They walk around, their heart's still beating. Only problem is movie um, users don't like to see this because that also means cut off its limbs and it dies. So they like the undead, it's dead, dead, unless you shoot its brain theme. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's interesting because it's, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of a shame because this is actually a good topic that we can go in depth on. And I think we're going to brainstorm some great ideas. So whether people see this or not, I think I'm going to be able to use this for future uh, video and referencing. But uh, it's, a, it's a question of how much of it remains alive. Because if we're talking about the body and all, the body and all tissue being 100% dead, that's really hard to explain with like a virus, you know, unless it's a virus yeah. that releases some kind of chemical that enters. See, but then it activates cells. So we can't have it activate actual cells because that brings back life or kind of Frankenstein bringing up uh, or Lazarus effect where it comes back to life. And we're not talking about that. It reanimates. Yeah, we're talking about reanimating, not bringing back to life. We don't want anything alive. But let's say the virus releases yeah. a kind of chemical or radioactive effect or something like that that uh, stimulates, we can say stimulates and animates the the being. It's really hard still to scientifically kind of create something like this, but it's not yet totally out of the, the realm. So something to think about, a virus to create completely... Undead. Welcome, uh, Victor. I read your your post Hello, there. Victor Von Doom. Hey, good. You have a voice. Awesome. We got another voice of the monster. Hood. <laughs> Sweet. Yes. Uh, the first time did we you... heard of you. First time. I was here two weeks ago. Okay. It's first time for me. Yes. Yes. You were. <laughs> so this is your second time in voice, at least. Correct. Yes. Cool. Um, did you? see the uh post i made a few hours ago yes i did um so i read that uh you'll be able to see that i kind of tried to read it quick but um i have it up on the screen too now we're we're live on twitch the the link is here too uh if you want to oh. follow along uh that's up to you but uh um, yeah, scroll up a little bit yeah so so yeah so i looked at yours and dog donzo here also sent me a list to, to talk through. So we're going to work through his list and his list kind of covers your stuff too. So we'll go one by one. We just started with the first one, which is viruses. Um, and today, to make it clear, we're talking about zombies like real, not real, but <laughs> true undead type zombies. So no infected. So it makes it a little, little tricky, especially starting with the topic of viruses because no cell can mm -hmm. be alive. It's just completely reanimated. So it's really kind of hard to, to make a lore oh. using just viruses as we know them. <laughs> so those were my thoughts. So I'm thinking like um, only 
in cases of where the virus can radiate some kind of uh, energy or release chemical to kind of stimulate the body into animating. Um, and then, yeah, have a hive mind. But see, that's going to be... Well, in the end, viruses are mi microorganisms. So there is going to be living something on it. But the original tissue, the... We don't want any assimilation, I guess what I'm saying, too deep to make mm -hmm. it resurrect. So with a virus, basically, but it would be... Go ahead. This <laughs> virus would also have to be able to um, preserve the body. Because last time, mm. I think it was Chris who made the point when I was talking about um, zombies would decay in around a year's time. But um, Chris right. reminded us that... Um, some zombies last extremely long times without showing any signs of decay. So sometimes this virus, uh, virus, sorry, I can't speak tonight. Mm -hmm. Virus would have to be able to preserve the body cells, even though they're dead already. Sure. Mm -hmm. So looking at the ultimate purpose of the virus, it is to survive, breed, and spread, right? So it wouldn't mm -hmm. necessarily yes. need that body, but it needs it long enough to infect another body. So we can, I would say preserve, but that's a lot of energy to preserve one body forever or for the length. I would say it'd be more dependent on searching, using that body, search out another body, another human or animal, bite and it, spread. infected, yeah, and then spread onto that. And There's also the possibility of being infected by eating infected meat. Also true. Right. Right. So, so anyway, where the bodily fluids, um, chemicals, blood, uh, can transmit the virus. Well, any tissue or fluid. Really. Mm -hmm. Look at this animals. Is they, in... Open wounds. Okay. They would eat the dead and possibly become infected themselves. Mm. Right. And therefore, it, depending on how developed this virus is, I mean, it can. Uh, make itself look like an edible piece of meat so a, a creature, a bear, or a scavenger comes and feeds on it and hence gets infected too. Uh, of course, through now, breeding. What was... This was shown um, during Resident Evil. I don't know which one it was, but the one with the crows in it. The crows had eaten temp uh, tainted meat and then turned like mm -hmm. flesh hungry zombie birds kind of stuff. <clears throat> Phobos said uh, an episode of George of the Jungle resurre resurrects a dead rhino and the rhino becomes a zombie that transmits its rhino uh, zombie plague through stabbing people with its horn. So it's got like an infected horn, almost I like, saw a, that one. like a venom. Um, I haven't seen that episode, but I do see the picture in chat. Mm -hmm. And I think because uh, Dog Don's and... last... Go ahead. And I was going to try and stay away from Resident Evil because, like I said in the post, it's mainly mutagenic in nature. Yeah. Right. At least we can cover that separately from virus. Because um, we, you also, Dog Danzo listed parasite, and I would put that along with virus because those are all microorganisms. Parasites can be uh, larger now. Yeah. Um, and uh, well, you can get bigger parasites like with the um, that vampire thing. Uh, last time. There we go. Right, right. So they're all essentially parasites. Um, and uh, mm. Victor did mention my video on uh, necromorphs, but the also necromorphs. the the creatures yeah. of the strain, um, the strigoi. Uh, we've that covered them a few I was times. I thought the strain was more vampire than zombie. Um, it was, but it's a parasite. Basically. Right, because they're feeding and they no, require the, the blood. But if you consider zombies require blood too, so I mean it's all feeding and mm -hmm. vampiric nature. It could be. Um, it depends. Well, mm -hmm. Zombies don't really require anything at all. It's just spread the uh, plague, spread the curse. Right. Through either a bite, a scratch, or some other infection. Right. So Victor, the... you actually got a very good point. 
they don't necessarily zombies are dead right they don't necessarily need 100 percent no higher brain function mm -hmm. right but we're, we're talking about a factor that could make them animated and so if it has a virus in it yeah, that virus is uh, alive the, the zombie is still dead so it depends how advanced the virus is and the parasite and if it directs it to feed because that gives it the initiative it right yeah otherwise the um, zombie would just be walking around Alfred, can I raise a point quickly yeah go ahead um this is kind of skipping the list but um now that Victor reminded me he said that zombies are dead and they don't really need anything However, there was one movie, I can't remember its name, because I was too young. But basically, it's number four, uh, radio, radioactive. Mm -hmm. Damn it, why can't I speak? Radioactiveness and chemicals, where chemicals that was used for a war had infected humans, and then their corpse turned to zombies. They would go after brains, not, be, not to um, satisfy our hunger, but to relieve pain. Hmm. So huh. that sounds like a very interesting take on the zombie. It was a very old movie. I can't even remember its name. I can't even remember most of the plot. But the zombie is like oh. practically a skeleton with a little flesh on it. I think you're talking about Return of the Walking Dead. I've got no idea, but they got this woman, like yes. this zombie woman, chained up, and basically she. They asked her, why do they eat brains? And mm -hmm. she said, the pain, the pain. Yes, yes, I love that. I just watched that movie. I rewatched it a, a few days ago. And I, I really ah. like that movie because finally they get an answer from a zombie. There's, I don't think there's ever been a movie with undead zombies where they actually got an answer why they do it. And yeah, they have a yeah. zombie female on the table and they ask her why. And she says it's the pain. They feel the rotting flesh. And the only thing that takes away from it is when they get to feed and feed on the brain and the chemical or something like that. It's not, you know, a great idea, but it's it, yeah, it is an idea. Yeah, chemical in the brain yeah. that leads to pain. And it could make sense with, like, adrenaline or something. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. And, yeah, that outbreak was created by a military uh, chemical. So Yeah, and now that's we can... mainly why I added it to the list. Yeah. And, and we can transfer from viruses and parasites easily to, to chemicals because, like I said, it can be all of that in combination. Because it would have to be also something true. really complex to make a dead body move and not, like, reactivate the cells. So, Well, if you think about it, the uh, things in I Am Legend mm -hmm. are zombies in a way. I didn't even think about that one. I completely forgot about it. Right. That now, now, how undead are they, though? I don't remember that portion. Like, how much... Well, they weren't really dead. They were the, more, like, just infected. heavily infected and influenced. The quote-unquote cure did indeed kill the person it was injected into. Okay. And then they reanimated. Got it. Okay. So it is a clear case of chemical... Okay, but we don't know the details still, like if the cells are reactivated or if it just animates it. Hmm. It's more like a uh, don't know, inoculation. Mm -hmm. A reset, basically. Essentially, yes. It's the quote-unquote cure for cancer. I see. In a way, it sounds like a, like a resurrection but you lose the human humanity you had before and you're just your body's alive again but you're not who you used to be so it's like a you get a different type of humanity mm -hmm. right it, they got higher brain function still but they're dead so even when okay so they are dead right clinically they yep. were dead okay they're yep clinically they're dead but they reanimated are able to think, formulate plans, lay traps, all that tame animals. Mm -hmm. So because the easiest answer, that's why infecteds are easier to kind of play around with with science. But once you get to fully undead bodies, 
it's really hard to justify any reasoning other than, of course, magic. And it depends how you explain that magic. Um, because if, if you... Body requires energy or electricity to activate, right? So even if you place that in, some kind of chemical or some kind of bacteria did that, put enough it still energy. still needs that energy. Yeah, it would get the energy and all the, the muscles would activate, but it would be just ridiculous. It would just start vibrating or just moving without function. So it's a matter of what activates not just those cells. That we can kind of get to explaining, but what gives it the function and purpose to stand up and know how to walk around? Because then it has to depend on the actual senses of the organism. And that's where it gets really complex and where magic explains everything. But that's also why um, movies oftentimes begins with, um, oh, it just started without reason. And yes, um, yes. We don't know what it is. It's just basically an easy gecko to say, we don't know what we're making. Here's a zombie movie. Watch it. And enjoy right. It, basically. It's a ex machina, as they call it these days. And that's cool. Since we always have a creating your own thing section in these monster casts, that's something I'd like to mention now is that's what I'd like to see in a movie. What you just mentioned, like a simple, it can be any kind of zombie movie, but at the beginning, instead of just starting and they're already doing the crazy thing, like they show a lab thing, but it's pretty like concise and it shows what's happening and they put kind of some kind of chemical and it started having a radioactive effect and it started spreading and it started having a function. Like explain that a bit and then continue with the rest of the movie. That'd just be a nice uh, yeah. start off. Or a sequel. I, I think we're going to get that in the movie, the upcoming movie, Overlord. Overlord. I haven't heard yeah. of that. Is I kind of a... saw the trailer, but not really. So that's uh, this kind of movie? It's a zombie? It's <laughs> set in World War Two, And it's a chemical thing where somebody is injected with something. They die. They reanimate. Okay. Okay. But I think they're going to give a scientific breakdown because there were scenes in the trailer where they're in a lab and they're showing the process. So they very well might explain how their zombies were created, what the process was. That would be nice, yeah. Um... Hmm. Now that I think about it, um, Zombieland, also in the beginning, after everything broke out and the main character is just walking down the road, mm -hmm. he actually explains that a mutated version of um, mad cow disease that got into a burger infected a human and then he just started sp spreading. So they don't really go too much into right. the details, but they at least give you something to work with. They say, okay, there was at least one person who got this kind of disease that right where he got it from over averaged yeah yeah um sorry can you repeat everything i i didn't hear a word all i heard was um hmm. so kind of lost my train of thought here um but sorry now, it's all good because that's what the movies do. They always give you some sense of where it started and what, but it's never very clear. I mean, they say they're completely undead, yet you can't cut off their head. That doesn't make sense again. So, again, it's deeper than that. I'd like to imagine zombies completely. When I say zombie and undead, I mean any part you cut off, it's still animated. But, of course, most Hollywood so movies... Space. Yeah, and this is, again, Hollywood influenced them by lore, by human lore. Uh, if you damage the brain or heart, depending on the lore, then it destroys it, right? So again, that makes it more parasitic in nature. Yeah. Like there's a there's a a headquarters of whatever. It relies is. on a certain organ. Mm -hmm. right. Well, if you look at The Walking Dead, you have decapitated zombies. The head will still bite. Is that right? I guess so, because uh, if they poke their eye out any... and. It, but anything else that's removed from the body, it remains inert. Right. Hmm. 
anytime they're stabbed through the eye into the brain, they immediately die. So again, the head is like the main uh, base there. Um, and well, that's, you can't just... move with. Uh, well, roaches can move without a head for a limited amount of time, but anything else, you need that control box. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's your CPU Christian, right there. Zombies that lose. Oh, you're talking. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, zombies that lose their heads, but the body and the head still works until you destroy the brain. How does that work? How does the body get? signals from the brain to work because well, you always see the zombies like the guy gets hit off by a shovel yeah yeah and it's still biting and the body is still moving but once they destroy the brain both exactly. die how does that work then you have those fun movies like something like adam's family related where you have it completely separated and they'll they'll function separately just fine uh even like in chucky he had the head separate from the body and he was telling the body to attack and move which was kind of funny and that's the kind of zombie I like to think of, like in especially in fantasy, because yeah, what what makes sense with the brain and why is that such a key thing? And that only that again is largely explained by the chemical or radiation or parasite have an influence over the brain, which gives the body function and a purpose to move around. Because otherwise, it would just be on the ground shaking, and and the muscles would be straining and and weakening you know constantly without purpose the brain gives it all purpose um in the the strigoi of the strain they're undead but they're worms and the worms infect the body they replace the blood of the body uh you're making sound there they're replacing the the blood of the human body with their own like white chemical so finally that circulates through the body and then the worm connects uh, via hive mind with other worms within the body and the anatomy is restructured too so now we start to think of like the necromorph thing too a little bit with the restructuring so it makes sense once the brain is assimilated they basically have to assimilate an organ and maybe they can only assimilate one type and that's the brain and once that's assimilated the rest is slavery um, well, maybe it's just a certain system. Like a nervous system? Because, or exactly. Mm -hmm. Because if you enslave the nervous system, everything else can just go straight to hell pretty much in a handbasket. Yes, right, right. Exactly. So, And there are, uh, for example, venoms uh, like neurotoxin. And, and snakes and such that uh, affects purely the the uh, nervous system. So now imagine a snake yeah, having this zombieish venom, and the snake bites a human, and and eventually they become undead but still animated. Um, but then again, the, the brain would still be alive. So we have to take the whole life away from our blueprints and figure this out. Um, because the, bla the brain sends electrical currents between cells and receptors and senders. Can that still be done if all the cells are dead? Uh, well, no, not to the way we understand things, but maybe to the way we don't understand things yet. Maybe in some way, yeah, because it's still there's something there. There's still substance. There's still flesh and chemicals. Left over. With nerves, they're a channel for electricity, so it is possible to move a dead body with I mean, scientists significant scientists, uh, with significant electric shock. Right, and yeah. we can do that. We can electrocute a dead body, and it'll straighten, strain the muscles, so it will move. But I'm talking about the brain now. Because the brain is what gives it function to stand up and go in the, to a specific direction. So, and the brain... That would be the parasite taking over the right. function of the brain. Yeah, yeah. And possibly the mouth or the hands will have um, eggs or offspring for the parasite. Is this maybe why zombies are always eating? Because when you see a zombie, they don't really chill out. I mean, 
unless you've got the walking zombies, in which case they're like pretty slow, but in normal zombie cases, they run and they pretty much sprint. Is this, could it possibly be because they, um, they need to feed in order to survive and have that electrical charge to power the body? Is why they constantly sprinting is because without that electrical charge, they know they're going to, the virus is going to die out. So they're right. constantly sprinting around searching for food. Well, that's, World War Z. That's a good point. Yeah, pretty much. They never but they don't really eat anybody. I never saw someone eat someone. They just bite and move on. They bite, yeah. So It's the... Uh, I don't think they need to eat because why, what purpose would eating do? If it, it would give the electrical is energy spread. to be an Yeah. Sorry, what? If their purpose is to spread the contagion then why eat? It, it serves no purpose. Yeah. So it's a matter of True, the but... purpose. So like Doc Danzo said, it could be to absorb the current or energy. So so that's the question. And let's pay attention to that next time we ever watch zombie movies and games is do they just bite or do they actually eat? Because if they feed, Th then they're destroying another body. So it doesn't work when they're spreading. But if they feed to actually... Uh, recuperate their own energy and so that they last longer, which they never show in movies also. They never show like one zombie over a span of 50 years. They always change zombies. They, they should at least oh, yeah. show like one in the facility and then they can see how quickly it degenerates. And when it feeds on something, does it recuperate that a little bit? Because uh, that would make sense. I can... I can think of two movies where there's examples of zombies eating. First of all is um, Zombieland where, yeah, mm -hmm. they bite, but once they've finished feeding, the body takes a while and then it reanimates. Not mm -hmm. instant like World War Z where it takes like 30 seconds because right. that's kind of impossible. But zombies would like eat and then once they're done, if there's not like 50 zombies eating yeah. and they completely destroy the body, if they have eaten, let's say... A happy meal. If they've eaten yeah. a happy meal amount, they will move on and then the corpse will reanimate. Mm -hmm. And um, the second example I can think of is Warm Bodies, basically Zombie Twilight. But yeah. um, this. There is a third. You see this. Sorry, what? There is a third. The Walking Dead. I have not seen The Walking Dead, so I cannot speak for that part. I've seen Warm Bodies and Zombie Land and World War Z. Zombieland and Warm uh, um, Zombie um, Warm Bodies are the only two examples I really can think of where zombies actually eat. Because Warm Bodies, just after the movie starts, you see this bone thing. I think they call them bonies. Now, this thing was on a uh, fire escape, pretty much just wrecking the entire body. Yeah. Looked pretty fresh, though. A lot of them eat. Um, even the original, I believe, Night of the Walking Dead. Uh, the remake, Night of the Walking Dead, The Return of the Walking Dead, and then, um, uh, did I say Walking, Living Dead? Sorry. And then The Walking. Yeah, you said Walking. Yeah, so The Living Dead, those movies, and then the series. I don't know about the other series. I haven't, haven't watched that one yet. But either way, a lot of these movies, yeah, they, they eat. They, they get in a group and they'll eat a corpse. But see, with what we were talking about, this only makes sense if... The body's fresh because then there's heat on the body and heat translates to energy. So that makes sense if they feed on a warm body and it recuperates some of the energy in that zombie. At least a tad bit because what's the point of eating dead flesh for them? They're already composed of dead flesh unless it somehow adds to the If the stomach body. may be active, like the organs may be active in a zombie, then it could lead to the stomach actually still working right. and actually processing the dead meat. Right. But otherwise, they would have to eat uh, warm flesh, and yeah, that doesn't really yeah. work. And, and it, once we say the stomach is still working, and some organs working, so now we're crossing the line of dead and alive, and, you know, go into that area again. So, but thinking of, true. yeah, everything's, because once the f stomach's functioning, that means that blood is being produced and nutrients are sent throughout the body, so... Hey, you can still call it. I mean, does it? I dead? mean, if the heart's beating, then yeah. But I mean, if the stomach's still working, it could be like what you said with the viruses, and um, 
um, fungi, it mm-hmm. could be sending, let's say a plant bite, for example, the roots send the signals to everything. So if you have a virus that basically everything's connected to the stomach and the stomach and the brain yeah. are the only things that work, then it could just send the entire currency through the whole body without actually, how do I say live? Because the rest of the organs like liver and heart and lungs don't really work. Right. That re- that reminds me of a certain enemy in, I think, Vault 29 in Fallout New Vegas. I haven't seen it. But that sounds interesting. It's a game. Mm-hmm. Um, the entire vault is overtaken by plants. They engineer, I believe, they either engineer or discover a... No, they engineer a, a fungus that's supposed to kill off insects, it infects everything, and the rest is history. Okay. That sounds terrifying. So I, I got in there a concept there because, you know, the question starts to be, how do you consider something alive or dead or not alive? And we start asking that question once we start making androids and very advanced AI is what's going to make it alive. And a lot of people will start to say soul and thing, but as far as how we can measure it, uh, essentially we can start to say things are alive because it, Imagine building a computer, a a human android with a chemical coursing through its vein-like structures. I mean, you start to have this living thing. An artificial art, perhaps? Yeah. So, you know, it's just artificial because it was made up by us. But the function is almost just like our human bodies, except our cells replicate. But if, if we made a technology that replicates artificial cells, then eventually, you know, then technically, scientifically, we could make a living thing, quote unquote, living, then there's going to be spiritual people that will say, no soul, something's dead or alive. I mean, if you have a pulse, right, so that's the real question. That's the deepest question in our discussion today is what (laughs) signifies whether something is really dead or not, because in, in science, There are clear answers, but once you get to non-science and spirituality, it's a different ballpark. So I would kind of say that zombies are almost like uh, organic androids. We can call them organic androids almost. Uh, Some, maybe the more infected ones. Yeah, because they 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 consist of different parts. Yeah. Well, an android doesn't have to be only made out of... uh, metal and plastic imagine an android yeah. being made of 3d printed organic material from human flesh an amalgamation of flesh of animals and, and human and we create a robot out of actual flesh you know and it works and thinks so this is where the line starts to be really thin between living and dead and sentient and not yeah that it's reminds like... me yeah. of Elder Scrolls Online with the Flesh yes. Golem. Mm-hmm. Why is that? Do tell. Oh, my mistake. I Flesh Atronok. Oh, okay. Flesh Atronok. So it's almost like a Flesh Golem, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Can you guys please explain? I'll pull it up here. I'll it's... pull up a picture. Go ahead. If you got something. It's like a Frankenstein. Essentially, a flesh astronaut is your Frankenstein. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah, now we're going to oh. Frankenstein. So, yeah, this discussion get get deep, and I think we can even continue this in the future Monster Cast talking about what's, like, the question of what's truly evil, what's good, what's dead, what's not. Um, we can further explore that because if we keep going on that here, we'll be distracted into now Frankenstein and the other vampires and liches and stuff. So I want to keep it to zombies to keep this a limited <laughs> time thing so we can actually finish within an hour. Yeah. 
but yeah, I've been studying here all night. And when well, you look at that atrium, if you look at that atrium that he mentioned, you see glowing parts in it. So you have like uh, again magic or stones, maybe technology. So okay, so that's a lot of unfinished like thoughts. Techno, uh, techno magic. Yeah. <laughs> so for Elder Scrolls, kind of. Mm -hmm. They look like they're bleeding out. Like every nice. body, part of their being looks like they're just constantly bleeding out to me. I know that's tattoos, but it just. Well, they're all like sewn it. up and, you know, yeah. they're, they're created. They, they are not naturally created. So we, we have a lot of unfin unfinished thoughts there, but they're good thoughts because at least we're asking the, the, the right questions. The problem is when you start answering everything and you're not asking the right questions. Good questions are yeah. more important than good answers sometimes. So I think we've stimulated some thoughts and that's cool. We can, so we've already got that in our brains. So next time we have a monster cast, all that stuff adds up eventually. So we become better at talking about this and thinking about it. Um, so let's move on. So upon, I'd like to kind of move on. Let's see, we skipped one, but we'll go back to it. Um, with viruses and parasites, we already mentioned chemicals and radiation. So let's move, what connects to that would be technology. And a technology, again, when we talk about microorganisms, because microorganisms, again, are alive, but we want nothing alive. Maybe like on our, Like what? So we want we want nothing alive on our zombies in this discussion. We want it completely just just animated dead tissue. Um, so technologically, how we could do that is replace microorganisms with nanotechnology, with micro technology. So essentially, just tiny robots, as tiny as a cell, that do the same thing. Moving their limbs. So but that would also mean that they are rebuilding. Possibly even using the iron in human blood cells mm -hmm. to, well, not human blood cells, human blood to recreate tiny robots. Because let's say, right. let, let's just take this to a different level. How would this weapon spread? Because if you have one body <clears throat> reanimated by little android robots, mm -hmm. how then you have one soldier. But if you can get away those, those robots to spread without actually losing any real robots then you could say that a zombie can release a tiny bit of the robots into the now right. dead flesh and yeah, then yeah. those robots use the blood to create more robots. Exactly. Eventually yeah, reanimating that corpse as well. Mm -hmm. That's how I would see I'd it say, work. I'd say that if we are using, if we're going to nanotechnology and nanites, that they would replicate in the fluids of the, in, the quote unquote infected yeah. And right. spread that way. If the infected gets shot, it's in the blood, it gets transmitted through the blood, and or the bite. Yeah. I, I so would... if someone gets sprayed with the nanite-coated blood, it would seep through their skin, infect them. It's kind of a scary thought because I was thinking to avoid overkill or overpower with such nanobots because essentially such nanobots, if they have the ability to fly these, if they're the tiny little crafts or robots that fly, they can infect everything on the planet and ta take over it. So essentially, again, we should be mo most afraid of maybe not the big aliens that come here and big UFOs and, and spaceships, but maybe tiny aliens that come here on a meteorite as tiny as bacteria, but it has camouflage ability or, or uh, forgot the word, but an ability to hide itself from vision, right? Just disappear. Uh, but it's actually technology based and they're so tiny that they can get okay. into our wounds and everything and take over our planet just because they're so much smaller. So imagine if... Yeah, this would have were... to be... Sorry, go ahead. I believe the word you were looking for, Arthur, is cloaking. Yeah, cloaking, right. So essentially it would be like... But this if... also takes um, the whole thing from... It would have to be aliens because if humans were dumb enough to give these robots like intelligence to do what they want, 
you got a whole new Terminator series on your hands. Right. But if you got if you got aliens, then they would strive to take over everything, and this would make it a much more they powerful could. weapon compared to military, would just they infect all the dead bodies. Don't even right. try with the living humans. Again, it, it don't depends. Don't make this thing too big. It depends again on the. What you're going to do with a pile of dead corpses? Mm-hmm. It, it depends again on that uh, the source of their directive. So imagine if we are that tiny race. We go to another planet, and the beings there are so huge, so huge. Everything's so much bigger that, than us that it is land to us. So we enter bloodstreams. We can farm inside. We create wars. We slowly destroy, lo- destroy large living humanoid or, or just organisms, sentient or- organisms, because we don't take responsibility for our action. So essentially, we're destroying them because they're so huge and they're so huge that we can live on them. So really what I'm saying is what we're doing to Mother Earth or the planet. If you look at the planet as a large organism, as we are, that's what we're doing. It We're destroying it. We're colonizing, is... but we're trying to make it alive. So maybe these like microorganisms, they're yeah. doing the same thing. But, you know, they have war against each other too and such, and that essentially destroys that. So we are the virus. That is true. But the problem with that whole thing is that... um. If we were to be able to, let's say, go into extremely large organisms like aliens in space, basically, and they don't even notice us if we're that small, right? their body heat would be the only problem. So we would have to have some uh, some sort of alien that is, it's big, but it's not warm. Because if you just look at the example from Attack on Titan, if you just touch your body skin, now you'll feel the heat. But if you multiply that heat... Hundreds and hundreds of times over, you're right. gonna be dead by the time you get to that body. Well, it only it's basically gets gonna be like a glowing alien. It only gets to a certain level before it becomes fire or magma. So it wouldn't be that hot yeah. for us. It would be like ninety, a hundred, a hundred and ten, which is still livable. But the point of that heat is actually it would be good for us because we would drain that heat for energy too. So. Also true, also true. That's interesting. So maybe the answer to all these zombie movies is tiny nanobots <laughs> enter all these zombies and animate them piece by piece and coordinate it. And we can't discover them because their technology is so advanced and they can cloak away from our microscopes. So essentially it becomes magic to us. Again, and that's what how magic, magic I like to usually the, explain. Um... Magic is... And even real life kind of concept of magic, when you talk about witchcraft and stuff, it's just science that we don't yet understand. Universal science. Took the words right out of my mouth. Right on. I'm probably going to sound like an entire geek right now, but if this um, alien nanotech, if it really were to be OP, it should be able to heal body wounds. Like, let's say someone gets shot with a shotgun. You're going to bleed out, and then the nanobots aren't going to be able to move around. But if they can use the blood, harden it, or just make like a steel cap to keep the blood from flowing out, that would make a zombie really hard to take down. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was thinking at the beginning is to keep them from being OP. Because, okay, if they have the ability to fly these bots that can fly, then they're unstoppable. Unless there's a smaller race than them, <laughs> then they can they can be infected by those. But that's like OP. So in my like lore, or, or in a game, what I would make the rule is they're borrowers. They only have technology to mine, and so they have to be in the human flesh. And I was going to say to swim, but no, once the body's dead, it dries out. So zombies have no fluids in them anymore pretty soon. But they have flesh. So these little nanobots would be able to just uh, mine or uh, not mine, but dig and drill through the flesh. And that's how they work. And they interconnect in there. So it's like a little ant farm in there. And that's how they uh, coordinate but, things. So that but they could also go with the Strigoi approach and re- mm-hmm. replace the blood like right. with some sort with of preservation fluid kind of thing. And then they can yeah, swim through it. But at least they're not in the air. So they're not everywhere. But they can still get in our food. They can still yeah. make different strategies. That's pretty cool. It'd be cool to make yeah. a movie like from that perspective or a game where you are that kind of nanobot and you have to take over this organism or you're a microorganism. That'd be a cool game. That'd be really well, cool. Well, if they are replacing the fluids, they could just replace it with themselves, replicate themselves to replace the fluids. 
Right. And then yeah, yeah, that's what I said. If so they are like, and if the host is shot at, they could just congregate in that area, form armor under the skin, and preserve the host. Yeah, be such a cool. Yeah, that'd but be that would cool. kind of imply like a kind of insectoid body because yeah, it's under the skin, so it's not really an exoskeleton, but it would have to be able to kind of like intertwine like armor, or else you got a solid metal shape. They can't really move because, well, you got bone and muscle trying to work against the metal of frame. Right. Well, there's something that propel like it forward. Sort of armor. It, yeah. it would be a reactive armor. That's... Which is something that the military is actually trying to develop. Nice. Nice. Armor that's fluid uh, until a burst of kinetic energy, until it's hit. That's why I was thinking, because something has to propel it, right? And to be propelled or moved forward, it either needs legs or it needs a uh, engine of some sort that releases some something that moves it forward or wings but Thrust. that's that's what i figured that our body is full of is it's full of substance actually there's little areas and those get congested once you're dead so it becomes all essentially soft but solid so that's why i was thinking more of just borrowing like there's a drill in front of it and so it just drills through the whole body and makes you know lines through the body and follows and makes paths like that um, but then again, if it makes its own fluid, then it can travel within the fluid that it creates in the body and, and such. Pretty cool, guys. Um, I would love to, you know the game, um, what's it called? You know the game Spore, right? Yeah. I've heard of it, never played it. So in Spore, it's you actually start... pretty good, just they should, they should really make a new version of it. They should. In Spore, but... I have this idea now. I think it would be even cooler because in Spore you start out as a pretty much single cell organism and then you your cells split and you become a more advanced organism until you get out of the water and you're on land and you adapt and, and evolve into an organism and then you start taking over planets. Yeah. So it's a really cool concept, but I think like what I just earlier mentioned, I like to see a game where you play as the infection, as the virus or like we were talking, the, the little bot. And you start in flesh. You start in a, let's say a human, because that would make it more attractive for us. We start in a human. And the first portion of the game is to successfully infect the human. So you're going to be battling red cells, red blood cells, uh, different chemicals. White cells. Uh, white cells. There and... is such a game, Arthur. Really? Cool. Yeah. Uh, yes. Send it to me. Again. So... It's called Plague Inc. Oh, okay, you got it there. Yeah, I've played that. Okay, I'll take a look at these screenshots. And it does have it's... the... Yeah. <clears throat> and it does have a Necroa virus. Oh, yeah, I've played this, or I've seen it. So that ju that shows the, the world thing, but not really, like, playing throughout the inside of the body. I'm talking, like, the game yeah, starts... Yeah, you just see the world. ...on a molecular you level. You see the, the world, the you... Yes, you do see the world, but you also control what develops in the oh, I see uh, virus, the okay plague you, that you're you spreading. You pick the symptoms. In cool, that. cool. So that is close. So the I just another game the transmission, the abilities, all of that. Right. Yes. There is another game we actually play as a zombie, but I can't really remember its name. But you basically start off as a zombie, then you bite people, and then eventually, like after like twenty minutes of just biting, you eventually have a zombie army. Right. And then it's an actual zombie play. Yeah, Stubbs the Zombie doing. was a cool, fun game like that. You bite people. That's and... the one. Yeah, it's awesome. I love that game. Played it twice over. Um. So yeah. So I'm thinking Wanna like. Want to play it? Can't play it. I'm thinking like this, but. It's still your perspective. It's still first person view. So you're you're struggling through at a micro uh, organism level within the body, your fighting cells, you're doing that, and then you're breeding. You're trying to breed, you're trying to spread. Once you successfully assimilate this being, 
now you get the perspective of like the the human being now you become the human being and you search out others and you attack them to spread that out and and so far and so forth maybe to that level of taking over planets i don't know but it'd be cool to start at that point and, and make it a full game out of it not just like say this happened and now we're a human attacking i want a full game like of make an actual challenge uh before getting to a whole assimilated zombie <laughs> So yeah, Stubbs the zombie was awesome. You can pull off your hand and make it crawl around the walls and attach itself to people. And then you can mind control those people with your hand. Pretty fun game. So, cool. Um, let's see, what other things do we have? So we talked about technology. And then technology can, again, go to radioactivity. It can go to things we still don't understand, different energy lengths, waves, and structures. I mean, we can create waves already, but we haven't learned how to make waves with like, with uh, complex functions. Because a wave is invisible to our eye. But imagine a wave that not only you can hear, but now this wave has a direction and an initiative because it's such a complex wave so essentially creating something that's invisible that can uh, do things so that's still technology you know that is even hard to really describe at this point but then that be through um, waves and energy creating invisible technology <laughs> essentially robots that are invisible because they're created through waves and uh, mixes of radiation and, and different things um, so we talked about technology, we talked about the viruses, parasites, and, but we skipped over funguses. Uh, Doug Donzo did mention, uh, plants. So um, funguses, similar thing. I, Go ahead. I did mention Fallout New Vegas having a fungus that, mm -hmm. uh, completely took over the infected. Okay. Let's take a look at that. In, I believe, Vault 29. Yeah, there it is. And they are, yeah, right. And you even talk to them. So they're still, like, alive, too. It's like they're, their body's just they're decrepit. Not, they're not truly alive. Their body has been completely taken over by this uh, fungus. Oh, I see. Okay. So essentially, it's an un undead human, but it's still a living organism. It's again a parasitic uh, plant yes. or fungus. So again, we're we're on that same level where it's like dead but alive. It's just another thing that's alive, and that's what we are too. Because eighty percent of what we are are microorganisms, or ninety percent of what we are composed of, or even higher. So w the humanity that we are is only about like less than 10%. The rest of us is composed of microorganisms. That's all of us. So that's a interesting thought. So when you start replacing these uh, humans with like fungus based, I mean, they're really just as alive as we are because we are just as much built out of more microorganisms. So yeah. That's always something we got to remember is that we are not we, or we really are we. <laughs> when you refer to yourself, you should refer to yourself as we, like Venom, because you are millions of microorganisms. Our microorganisms outnumber our human cells. So, yeah, we're an amalgamation of organisms, <laughs> and they probably affect us in ways we don't even know. Depression... Uh, different types of thoughts that's probably triggered by, again, microorganisms too. They're in us all the time. I am Donzo. So we don't no, need to talk about... Donzo. We don't have to bring we up spirits or the devil or something that the devil made me do this or spirits. I'm hearing spirits because there's so much still biological things that affects us that it could be the microorganisms that make us imagine ghosts and and things like that and voices so it can get pretty deep well demons mm. are really just they're like in a not really an alternate dimension more like we just have we don't have to filter over our eyes to see them and they don't have the bodies to re to really work against us they can't really push us or anything but they can still touch us every now and then 
And that's the really terrifying thing is we can't see them, but that doesn't mean they're not there. Yes, yep. we so... can't see them, but we can see what they do. Yeah, we can see, like, them knocking on a door, for example. <clears throat> but we can't see a full body creature running, chopping off your arm and then just tearing into you and then vanishing. Yeah. That's not what you see. Well, that's well, a... There are some... That's a bit of a debatable topic because there are right. some that are able to see such things. Yeah, we talked about it last Saturday when I talked about the Yandere exp experience I had. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did watch that video while I was mowing the lawn. Yeah, demons are a whole other topic because uh, now we're getting to other existential topics, religion, and yeah, realities, animals. and a lot of stuff. So, And again, with science, uh, what it could essentially be is without it being magic or spiritual vision, it's just another thing of perception of our reality that we simply don't see, and our technology isn't able to yet. So technology essentially is very fascinating, and we should develop it. goodness for that. Just always have the right intuitive mind behind I it. I don't want to see I don't want to see anything I'm not supposed to see. If it's, if it's not supposed to be seen, <clears throat> I'm happy with that. I don't want to see what lurks around my house. Well, that's debatable the again. House, that's, that's debatable again too, because who's to say what should be seen and not? I want to see everything. I just want enough knowledge to be able uh, to comprehend it no. and understand it. Uh, because that's what creates fear and then and shallowness is our knowledge. It's not because something we just shouldn't see. That's somebody directing us from above, and that's, again, limiting our, our freedom. So, again, that's topics for religion and a lot of uh, ethical and well, moral... arguably, it subjects. could be above or below. So, uh, Doc Danzo mentioned also military... <laughs> Military and government, so that basically relates to everything we've talked about, because they could be the ones that make the parasites, or they could be the ones that make the the chemicals or virus or technology. So, uh, yeah, um, military and government. I was be... more going for the. I was more going for the World War. I think it's game to black. I don't know the thing where there, there's just this massive heart in there. It's bunch of zombies and it's just. World War II scenario where this mosquito um, lies from it to basically just make soldiers from dead bodies and then farm these zombies. They don't have arms, but they completely burn up and you just see it all. You see the zombie, you see the zombie who has his arms. It isn't a virus, it's just someone who's basically uh, hold on, Dr. So experiment. Hold yeah. on, your your speech is becoming very robotic. I would say, like, take a pause and then continue. Yeah, it is indeed becoming robotic. I, I don't mean to put you down. It, you're uh, not robotic, like, boring. <laughs> I mean, it's just getting distorted by the <laughs> microphone. I understand. I understand. I've experienced that. Can you guys hear me already? Uh, uh, not really. Yeah, it's still kind of distorted. Unfortunately. Very distorted. It, that would be probably due to internet, so just make sure you're close to the yep. microphone and, and you're connected well. <laughs> Donzel's becoming a robot. Assimilation. <laughs> um, so yeah, I believe he was talking about like uh, even some Nazi stuff and experimentations. Um, yeah, whenever you can, Doc Danzo, feel free to jump back in. Operation Overlord. <laughs> yep, yep, can hear you great now. Oh no. Can you hear him, Victor? Is he talking? Because I just see his green light getting on. My apologies, my mic was being cued by my shirt. Hmm. Yeah, I don't hear Doc Danzo at all, but I see the, the green lighting up, so I'm not sure. Ch -ch 
whenever that happens, it's just best to probably pause, reaffirm your connections, and then continue. Sometimes it's just too much uh, going through the bandwidth. Okay, I'll, I'll read what you type in there too. Um, so finally, after that, uh, we have, he mentioned voodoo and, uh, so that's basically magic. I don't like to just point out voodoo because voodoo has different aspects to it. It's just Hollywood points out one, but, um, it's magic essentially. And, and as we mentioned earlier, magic is basically technology that we, not, not technology, but reality that we still don't understand a universal science. And actually, in our reality, as we know it, our technology is developing more and more. And I, I'm actually connected with some such people that are fascinated in that to see different radiations that are created from crystals and different stones and to be able to measure that. Uh, that's something I also wanted to create in this lifetime. I think it would be totally groundbreaking uh, because... That's what it is, is creating devices to be able to read things that some people say they can feel, but they can never prove it because everybody's different. We need something to be that neutral ground to give us numbers, to give us some sort of indication. And until that time comes, we're going to continue calling that magic and third eye and auras and things like that. And all these named, these words and words that are... Uh, indoctrinated by different religions too we won't have a developed or a neutral word for for a while uh, there are certain ones that are more neutral if you get into such studies so again magic and magic can work in all sorts of these ways that we talked about it can be an energy because essentially what magic is it's it's energy energy that's either manipulated or has a kind of complex directive so it's just this energy you know, in China, they call it qi, the energy of the body, but it's energy. Energy is energy. Everything is energy. And if you start seeing something like reality like that, it's like the Matrix movie. Instead of the, you're, you seeing the code, you should be seeing things in vibrations or wavelengths and or. Or if we are truly that simulated, we would see code, but we don't have the device to pick up that code yet. In the movie Matrix, they do. In that world of the matrix computers can already pick up the coding around us uh in our reality as far as we know or are conscious of we don't have that yet but eventually we may develop it and realize that our reality is a hologram it's very possible there's nothing that scientists say that disproves that this reality could be all a hologram to us it could be very much a hologram false universe um which is we're in it so deep that how are we going to find it who cares and just keep living your life, right? But it is always fascinating and there's no problems in seeking that as long as you don't start to manipulate it for greed and such, uh, I believe, because that is that is the natural run of things. Now, Doug Danzo said, our phones today, Phobo said, uh, our phones today would be creations of the gods 1,000 years ago. Exactly. Uh, even we visited a uh, small tribe, um, one in the 70s, and when we flew away and came back, before we came back, they already made symbols of our airplane and started worshipping that. Upon arrival, again, they worshipped us. They already saw us as gods. It's the same as we would see aliens. So it's funny because people always put down magic and I've talked to brilliant people out there and they'll still put down things like in witchcraft and psychic stuff. And it's silly. And then there's some people that are just too deep and, and too gullible for some things. But they never look in the middle and consider that we really don't know crap. Uh, we know less than we will ever know. And once you accept that fact, that is a fact, uh, then you'll realize that you shouldn't shun anything. Just reconsider how you label words. How, what kind of words you use to describe things. Maybe don't call things angels. Uh, because they're much more complex than that. That's just an indoctrinated word from a religion created by people, by humans, a long time ago. It's a very dated, you know, so you have to always reconsider the wordings. That's why I always look at how I explain things uh, in a more concise way that applies to everybody. We want to avoid indoctrination. Uh, 
if we want to develop as a race. And that's science indoctrination, religious indoctrination, cultural. It exists everywhere, even from your own friends and family. That was a bit of a rant there, but just killing the silence. <clears throat> so sorry. Probably nobody's going to listen to this anyway. Um, Dogdanzo said, okay, basically this game was in World War II where Hitler wanted more soldiers. And as such, the doctor created multiple zombies without a virus or fungi. Basically just made a ton of Frankenstein monsters you need to kill and try to find the images. Oh, Wolfenstein. Yeah. Hey, dog. And speaking of Hitler, he did dabble into a lot of uh, other stuff um, that they usually mention. He did dabble in, like, the dark arts and, you know, magic, as we call it, with a CK at the end. Not magic like we see in games and fantasy world stuff. So... That makes sense. And there's always, always that, like, perfect soldier in movies, too, where they create, you know, people or upgrade them and such. I'm truly not sure. So, I think we just about covered. We got a viewer saying, hi, Tyrant Force. Hey, Tyrant Force. That's a cool name. So, I think we just about covered all those possibilities um because we covered magic once you cover magic and undiscovered technology and understanding of reality then we've pretty much covered the rest of the atmosphere of the stuff we didn't cover yet <laughs> so that's a cheap way of covering everything um can you think of anything else victor well as i stated in my post there are the ghouls of helsing the uh, victims of a vampire attack who are no longer virgins. Okay. Vampires that... They are what of vampires that are no longer virgins? It's a anime show about a certain family of vampire hunters, but these vampires create undead servants with no will of their own. I see. That are cannibalistic and very, very, very uh, infected with this thing. They're completely subservient to the vampire that bit them, or the ghoul, well, the vampire that bit the ghoul that bit them. Got it. Et cetera, et cetera. And you're talking about Van Helsing, right? Yeah. No, no, this is not Van Helsing. Oh. It is a anime following a future generation of the family of Van Helsing. Got it. Okay, cool. Or present day. Mm hmm. Right on. Um, and I guess that's one more thing I'd like to cover that because we went pretty far in many directions. Um, because once you say that they're created, once a living thing or undead thing is created artificially or by means of magic or, or a curse or something, like that's how you see a lot of things in necromancy <coughs> is, for example, a golem. When you create a golem from whatever thing, if it's like from fire, let's just say from flesh, an amalgamation of flesh from different animals, you stick it together, you use a spell, a curse to make this flesh work as a being. Its first purpose may be, if it doesn't have a soul, it depends on your way of thinking, to destroy you and to destroy everything in sight because its creation... Let me mute you a little. Because its creation was unnatural, so it has this natural uh, desire to just kill. That's all it knows. Um, so, event so essentially what the necromancer or the creator has to do is to have power over it. So within the spell, it's already in the incantation, in the wording, that he, will have, he or she will have power over that entity. That's how in real life spells, even that I can remember... Um, uh, golems can be creative if you sacrifice your own blood or whatever 
you need to have that power over it. That's a, a key element that a lot of games forget too, but not all. Um, so as essentially what we were talking to, uh, today about is undead zombies. We didn't talk about like undead, like just golems too. I mean, that's a zombie essentially too, but we were talking more about that humanoid, but it's all kind of the same. So, so yeah, having that power over it uh, to make sure it doesn't attack you. And once it, your power is too weak, it'll turn against you and kill you and just kill until it's uh, destroyed. It's it's almost that Frankenstein kind of story. And I, I just recently watched a, a modern take on Frankenstein, a movie, and it was pretty decent, too. Um, yeah. And that leads into the subject of demonic possession of a dead body. Possession, yeah, that's another thing we didn't even clearly state sure like look at the lazarus effect mm -hmm. or the lazarus project either one of those uh you get a dead body and you try and bring it back to life but you bring something else through something that is not the intended target yeah, got it. It becomes dis distorted through the, the the process. So yeah, I guess another. I don't think it's necessarily distorted through the process, but something else intercepted the signal. Got it. Yeah. All right. And then changes or manipulates. Um, yeah, so I guess one more thing to to our list is possession. Just having a, a spirit, demon, ghost, god, deity, uh, entity, whatever it may be, some kind of consciousness activate an inanimate body. And so maybe that's what zombies in a lot of movies are. They're just uh, like Chucky. That's what Chucky is. It's a it's a spirit of a dead criminal psycho that entered a, a doll, right? And then it slowly yep. becomes alive. Uh, so, so yeah, entities, possession. Good. Now we've got them all. <laughs> as far as what we can <laughs> word, actually, with our human words and knowledge of possession. Yeah. Nice pictures here. Uh, Dead Snow was another fun zombie movie that you may want to check out the out there people who are fans of zombies. It had some funny new concepts I've never seen in a uh, zombie movie, <coughs> such as using a, a zombie's intestine to put fuel in the car, like using it like a pipe. <laughs> so, I believe it was mentioned on the last uh, monster cast that I was on. It may, yeah, it may have been. In some roundabout way. I think so. So he's showing some uh, examples. That's a nice one. That's a nice shot there. I got you, Doc Danzo. Danzo. So those are some uh, of the ones from Wolfenstein, looks like. So that's that. Oh, we have to mention the next show. This show is actually going on to an hour 30. I thought we'd be done in less than an hour. I didn't see many people on. and But it is such an awesome topic, really, when you start delving into it. You, that's why you can't be too tired of zombies. But you can for sure be tired of what the media out there is creating. But I, I love the concept itself. So for our next show... I'm going to mute you, Victor, a little bit because your shuffling oh, is... My apologies. I'll go push to talk. Okay. Um, so for our next topic, I remember last time we had Gargamel that mentioned the topic and then we mentioned this one. There were more votes for the zombie one. So for the next topic, our next topic of discussion, unless you guys have some thoughts... Uh, Gargamel wanted to talk about cryptids, cryptozoology, so all those creatures like Bigfoot, aliens, ghosts, uh, that we get footage of, or so-called footage of, in our lives here. Um, so, but we're going to zoom it in, the topic, the next topic is going to be 
and t- tell me if you want another one, and you guys too in the in the comments. Um, I think what our topic should be is cryptids near you. So yeah, share about share information. So the next monster cast is going to be us sharing uh, information about cryptids that we hear about and are knowledgeable about from our our personal areas near us. So I would be talking about probably the mountains here in the United States. Dogdonzo would be uh Dogdonzo would be talking about uh monsters and cryptids uh local to South Africa. So everybody would be talking theirs on their country. So I think that'd be more specified so we don't don't talk about cryptids because that's a huge, huge topic again. So cryptids near you. We'll call it that. What's the other word? Indigenous to your area. There you go. And if you can find some cryptids that are really indigenous to your area, that'd be awesome. Because what that means is they only exist in that area. Because Bigfoot, you can find it all over the world, but there's different versions. But then there's cool like monsters, like in Africa, you have the Takalash, which is indigenous only to, well, to the continent of Africa, which is huge. So depends where exactly. But how about specific to South Africa? So indigenous cryptids to you. I hope I explained that enough. If you guys can't hear me, uh, I know Dog Donzo that I cut out sometimes. You can just watch this portion of the video, like skip to it. We're at an hour, 30 minutes right now. So you can skip to this later and see the topic. And I'll also mention it again before our next talk. So all in all, um, we don't need to cover like animals and uh, our creations because that was all within the show pretty much. Uh, really, I want to say that I enjoyed this topic a lot because, and this is, guys, why I love the, doing this. This is why I can do this channel. I'm in my 30s. This is why I can do this even in my 60s, 70s, because it's never just about fake monsters. It's silly when you tell people what you do and you say you have a channel about monsters. And right away, what do they think? Just games and movies and mythology. But it's so deep because we start to talk about morality. We start to talk about science, what makes us living and not. Uh, religion, everything is touched by monsters. It really is. And it's a fun way to get interested in history. The, um, you know, And a lot of people are bored about history and human and religions and psychology. But monsters are a nice path to get into that. It's that gateway drug to other subjects that we might find boring that they teach at school. So it sure works for me to get interested and expand my knowledge of our reality here. <clears throat> so essentially when people ask me, what do I do on World of Monsters? The real answer is explore reality. Any any thoughts, Victor? Any final thoughts? Dog Don, so you can... I found this to be a very, very entertaining and enlightening video cool. on the sub. Your area is that your immediate area or places you've been throughout your life? Um, we'll see. I'd say the immediate where you are now would be the best. Um, but of course that connects everything. So if you don't have anything interesting for your place now, then sure you can cover places where you grew up or whatever. That that's absolutely fine. Um, we'll we'll see how much people have to share and we'll just go with that. But starting point, what's around you, I guess. Yeah, I only know of one thing that might count as a cryptid for my immediate area. And it's the cannibal of the frozen north that shall not be named by me. Oh, yes. Okay. Of, uh, invoking it. Got it. I know what you speak of. Okay. Yeah, so we'll bring all that up uh, next time. So, yep. We'll see how deep we get on it. We'll start with just mentioning the stuff, and then we always get into deeper discussion. So, Dog Dons, if you want to get on the mic, that's cool. If you want to say some last thoughts. If not, type them out. I'll read them. Phobos said something extremely important. He said, Arthur, wish Godzilla happy 64th birthday while we're doing this. I didn't realize. 64 years this year. Well, that's... 
probably 65 is going to be a, the number by fives, right? But 64th, wow. So, yeah, happy happy birthday, Godzilla. Um, and that's a big one on the channel. I actually need an emoticon or emoji of Godzilla on here. We need that because uh, that's a huge thing. Doc Donzo just hit level eight. Congratulations. <laughs> so... Yep, we've done the All About video on Godzilla out there, if you want to check that out. We went on in-depth on the anatomy, everything, with Godzilla, too. All right, and looks like everybody's ready to... Okay, so I'll just end this up with thank you, guys. Um, really, I wasn't planning on my energy jumping up this much. It just really triggered up some some thoughts and passion uh, I love this, this discussion. It was better than I was expecting as far as depth. And really, we didn't even go halfway where we could. So, uh, yeah, thank you, everybody, for participating. Again, remember, what we do here at World of Monsters, if you feel shy, subscribe to this channel <laughs> or talking about it. Don't be, because essentially what we do is explore reality in a much more interesting and entertaining way, I think. We can make a whole world of monsters high school or elementary school, and it will still touch upon mathematics and everything just from a more colorful standpoint. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Victor, for joining. Great to be back. I'm looking forward to next week. Awesome, man. Definitely. Um yeah, we should have it next week, same time, same place. And if it'll change, I'll let you guys know ahead. Um, thank you, Dog Donza, for uh, also joining us. Remember to say, uh, I don't know, Phobos is, he's hes having, he's in the phase now. He's in the Phobos phase, so I'm not going to bother him about these things. I was expecting that update, though. <laughs> uh, so thank you, Phobos, in the chat for joining us. Who else was there in the chat? Phobos never missed a, a meeting. Z was here for a short time too. One person I don't see, I thought I saw, was Don, was Donde. I don't know if Donde was here at all. But the monster hunter Piccolo. Uh, who's that? That's not Donde. Yeah, that's that's monster hunter. Now he changed to Piccolo, right? Uh, so yeah, we had him here. So thank you everybody for participating. Again next week cryptids near you coming soon the power of snack girls have corrupted the mind with greed <laughs> all right let's play the outro music any last thoughts go ahead and share them there we go don't fear the unknown embrace it analyze it and seek to understand it very well said, and I love the ending words. Absolutely agree. Don't give in to indoctrination out there. Awesome. Uh, what else did I want to see? Oh, I think I, I wouldn't even put this on YouTube. I wasn't sure yet, but considering how awesome this went, uh, thank you guys again. I think this will end up on YouTube. It was worth it. It was worth it. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>